This next section, we're going to talk about the planning, things you want to think about before you do your injection. The first thing you always want to think about is doing your injecting with somebody else around, having a buddy. What that does is that ensures that if something happens like an overdose, you've got someone there to look after you, to call 911, uh, and to do life-saving measures if it's necessary. If you don't have that friend around, we can't do those things. Very important. Um, the next thing you want to think about is injecting in a place that feels comfortable, that you feel safe and that you can be calm and relaxed. So if you're injecting in a place where you're going to be rushed, uh, there could be pedestrians around that kind of thing, it's not going to help the situation. You're probably going to rush it, you might miss your injection, so you really want to think about finding that place and establishing that and ahead of time. So that's your planning. The next really important thing is having an naloxone kit. You always want to be carrying one of these around with you because, and also known as Narcan, these kits have the life-saving measures in case you happen to use a strong dose of opiate like fentanyl. So it's going to have all your usual supplies, your uh, needles, your naloxone, etc. You can get these at places like at Anchors. You can also get your kits at your public health uh, suppliers. Some pharmacies provide them, so you're going to want to look into where to find those, but these are readily available now. The other important thing you want to think of before you do an injection is seeing if you can get your drugs tested. Where drug checking services are available, you can have your drugs tested to see what their contents contain. If you don't have that, the next thing you want to consider is actually doing what's called a test dose. So doing a test dose is a small amount of your drug that you inject, you wait 10 to 15 minutes and see if it's a really potent dose or not. So this is a really huge overdose prevention measure that you can do quite easily. You can also take a small amount of your drug and you can consider smoking it if you prefer to do that. Another way to check and see if it's really strong or not, if it's going to be uh, too strong to do it all at once. Another one that people often overlook is staying hydrated. When you actually drink a bunch of water, that allows your blood vessels to get really big and much easier to hit. So people don't really think about drinking water. It helps with a number of other things as well, but drinking water is a huge one. Raw cocaine. So how do you break this stuff down? Should I use some vinegar? Should I use some lemon juice? No, those things cause infections. They cause all kinds of inflammation at the injection site. Absolutely use ascorbic acid only. And you can get these at any of your harm reduction supply centers. Blood vessels, where the heck should I inject and should I not inject? Arms are best. If you can inject into your arms, rotate your sites, that preserves your blood vessels. The veins are closer to the surface of the skin, they're darker in color, and your arms have the best target areas. If you go into veins into your neck, you get an infection, uh, you have big problems. You got a brain right here and um, bad news. Don't inject in your neck ever. Um, you're growing as well as an area you can see veins sometimes, not an area you want to consider injecting into because a lot of blood vessels that are arteries, much deeper, big problems. If you hit an artery, your blood's going to squirt out, uh, you're not going to get your drug in, you're going to miss your injection. When shooting cocaine or meth, there's some other considerations you want to think about. So with cocaine, you, you typically are injecting many times. and this particular drug causes a numbing effect. So sometimes when you're injecting, you actually can't feel whether you're in a blood vessel or not. You can't feel if you're in a nerve. Um, it can cause a lot of damage. So the important thing is to be really careful when you're injecting cocaine and as much as possible, rotate your sites. Don't stay in one site and cause a lot of damage to one spot. Uh, with meth, crystal meth, there's a lot of particulates and a lot of chemicals that are used when you're making meth. When these things are injected and they don't go right into the blood vessel, what can happen is you can get really significant infections around that site. So it's extra important when you inject them, you have to take a lot of time, have a lot of precision to make sure that blood gets into the bloodstream, it gets more diluted, much less chance for any kinds of infections that can follow from that. The final thing we're going to look at, when you're finished your injections, you're always going to want to put your sharps in a safe container like a sharps container like this. They've got the biohazard symbol on them, Everybody recognizes that. There's also these portable kits that are becoming more popularized. They've got a couple little compartments. You can put your clean stuff and your dirty stuff in here or just use it for your use syringes. Always want to have one of these handy. They're very compact. Absolutely for the safety of public, always um, put your sharps uh, into these containers and dispose them safely. Places again like anchors or harm reduction supply places, public health is where you can dispose of these.